Well, Elena Athens listening to every second of those tapes today. Elena, this is five hours worth of audio, and at times I know it was extremely hard to take it all in. Yeah, I had to walk away at some points because uh, it was so disturbing. We want to caution. We're not going to show you or provide you every bit of audio on that tape. The only thing and the only time Chris Watts really became emotional was when he uh, spoke about killing his eldest daughter. He says the four-year-old's final words haunt him. Trust me, I hear that every every day when the fellow is talking to me, I was like, oh, uh, what do you mean? When she said that, you know. Now, this interview was conducted by Colorado investigators. They sat down with Watts in January. That was two months after he pleaded guilty to killing his wife, Shannon, his daughters, Bella and Cece, and his unborn son. The girls were found stuffed inside oil and gas tanks at the plant where Watts worked. He said in an interview uh, he first strangled his wife after she brought up the affair he was having. He says the eldest child, Bella, walked into the master bedroom after the killing, and she then started following him around the house, questioning what's wrong with with mommy as he was dragging Shannon's body into his pickup truck. We learned in the tape the children were still alive when they were submerged in tanks. Investigators kept asking him why he did this. He responds repeatedly that he wasn't thinking. That I wasn't coherent enough to make that decision to where I knew I was going to kill my girls. No father would want, ever want to do anything to hurt his, his blood and flesh, but I did that and I just don't understand how it happened. Now, after Watts was arrested and placed in jail, he was put on suicide watch. What Watts talked about doing to help calm his nerves after the killings ahead at 5 o'clock. For now, we're live in the newsroom. Elaine Athens, ABC 11 Eyewitness News.